Hello everyone, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I'm Arif, your Cloud Learning Journey Partner. Well, in today's video, we're going to cover AWS CloudFront. So CloudFront is more of a CDN content delivery network service. So the good question could be why we need to use a CDN for our web application. The answer is suppose your application you have deployed in AWS North Virginia region. So users from US can access your application quite uh, faster. But what about the users who are in different regions like in, U, uh, in uh, UK or maybe in Europe? When they're gonna access, uh, try to access your application, the latency will be higher because uh, they are far, far from your servers. So how can we solve this problem? Well, AWS CloudFront gonna solve it for you. So what AWS CloudFront gonna do? It's gonna cache your application static content in different age location all around the world so suppose if uh, an uh, european customer uh, wants to access your application the static contents or the contents will be served from that european uh, age locations so that your web application will be uh, served to your uh, end users in a very fast manner. So into this video, what we're gonna do, we're gonna create a S3 bucket. We are gonna host a static website inside the S3 bucket. Then we'll create a CloudFront distribution. We'll integrate the CloudFront distribution with the S3 bucket so that our contents or our web application will be served from the CloudFront. So before starting the video, I just want to talk about myself. Well, uh, I do have more than eight years of experience in cloud computing. Uh, currently, I hold multiple certification in AWS, Azure, Google Cloud. Beside that, I have CIS, SP, and CCS certification you can see my certification in the background uh, this channel is all about cloud computing and cybersecurity. so if you are interested in these topics uh, please like and subscribe to my channel because i'm planning to upload more and more videos in a very frequently manner and uh, without further ado let's get started I have logged into my AWS account from AWS account first uh, I will go to S3 because uh, I want to create a S3 bucket and I will host a static website there. So this is the, my S3 console from the S3 console first I need to uh, create a bucket from this button I need to click create bucket and here I have to give it a name so uh, let's try to be a little bit creative let's call it uh, uh, the cloud investor dot com and let's create this bucket in the AWS uh, North Virginia region and for uh, we'll go with the default uh, settings uh, in this uh, video i'm not gonna cover how to create s3 bucket because i had uh, created a video related to s3 bucket uh, and please uh, refer to that video if you want to learn more about s3 buckets so for the owner object owner we'll uh, go with the default setting that is acl disabled now uh, for the block public access uh, so think about like we want to, it to be a web server so if we block all public access so it's uh, not uh, doable in that way so for that reason i'm gonna uncheck this button so it's uh, publicly accessible i'll acknowledge that i want to do that uh, well there's a fun fact related to it um, few years ago whenever we create a s3 bucket it was uh, public by default so there wasn't this uh, default block all public x option so what happened that uh, some very very big fintech company they launched uh, they launched different s3 buckets and they put very sensitive information inside that and guess what those buckets got uh, hacked so after that incident aws changed this policy and now whenever we create a s3 bucket now all s3 buckets are uh, by default uh, uh, blocked like all public access are blocked okay so bucket versioning we don't need it and default encryption will go with the s3 and uh, for advanced setting everything looks good and i'm gonna click create bucket okay great so now we do have a bucket named as the cloudinvestor.com which uh, the cloud investor it's uh, my channel name so luckily i got the name one uh, uh, cool part about this is that uh, whenever we create a s3 bucket this bucket name should have to be unique universally unique so if someone already uh, taken this uh, bucket name i can't reuse it luckily i got this one 
So right now it's empty. So first, uh, uh, let's uh, try to upload a file in here. So I have already created one index file and I'm going to upload it. I'm going to drag and drop it in here and click create upload upload and uh, then i'm gonna close it even though now i do have a file i can't access it directly because uh, i have to do some setting to make it a static website so under the properties then i have to scroll all the way down here the option is a static website hosting and i have to click uh, edit and enable it and i'm gonna choose index.html as the default file and uh, i don't have any error.html so i'm gonna again put index as html and after doing that now i have to scroll down and here i can click save changes so now this bucket is a static website so if i go to the properties again all the way down now i have a specific link this is the cloudinvestor.com so this is the endpoint that i can uh, use to access my static website so if i click here we are getting an error that is 403 forbidden because uh, if we go back to our s3 bucket and go to our permission tab here we don't have any bucket policy that is allowing to access our objects so we need to uh, create a bucket policy so i'm gonna click edit and here i'm gonna paste a code a json code in here so if what we're doing if we just uh, go through it uh, real quick it's uh, just uh, we are allowing to everyone to get s3 get object and the resource arn we need to change it we need to give it our s3 bucket arn so our S3 bucket area, we can get it from the properties section. And uh, here we go. This is our S3 bucket area. So here I'm gonna change the area. Great, so once we make these changes, uh, let's save the changes. And now as we have updated this, let's go back again to the properties, to the S3 static website hosting and click this link once again. And now it's working for us. So now we do have a very simple uh, static website, just only one page that is the index.html that's uh, written like cloud journey, hello world. Great. So now our S3 bucket endpoint, static endpoint is working. And in the next step, we're gonna create a, a CloudFront distribution and serve this content from the CloudFront distribution. Okay, so now from the search menu, I'm gonna look for CloudFront. From the CloudFront, uh, here, this is the CloudFront console, and right now I don't have any CloudFront distributions, and I'm gonna about to create one. So I need to click create distribution and here we need to choose the origin domain. So here you can see all my S3 bucket list is in here. So I'm gonna go with uh, the cloudinvestor.com s3.amazon.aws.com. So here we are getting one uh, alert that is this S3 bucket has a static website host enabled. If you plan to use this distribution as a website we recommend use the S3 website endpoint rather than the bucket endpoint. So right now this is the bucket endpoint. So as CloudFront noticed that we are using this uh, S3 bucket for hosting a website. So now it's suggested to use the endpoint. So let's go back in here and uh, copy this uh, uh, endpoint in here and go back and we're gonna remove this and paste that one. Uh, one thing to remember, we need to remove the HTTP part. We don't need that. Okay, so that's good. It's done. So for here, we're going to go with HTTP option. And uh, let's go with the all default. It should, HTTP default port is there. And... Uh, then uh, we can uh, look into the origin path it's op optional and uh, as we only have just only one file inside the bucket so it's not required even for us um, then uh, the 
name of the uh, origin entered the name of the origin so it was automatically picked up by the cloud front that's good and if you want to add any header you can add it but uh, in our case uh, we don't need any header then uh, origin shield uh, for now uh, let's just don't uh, add it if it's needed we can add later so what is origin shield origin shield is an additional caching layer that can help reduce the load on your origin and help to protect its availability so add a different feature if you need this feature you can always go for this one and then the cache uh, the additional settings let's go with the default for everything and the compress uh, yes we want to compress it and uh, the viewer protocol http and https we are allowing both and uh, if uh, you are hosting uh, a web application in a pod environment then definitely go for this option that is redirect http to https even so what does it mean like even your user is trying to access your website using http when the cloud phone gonna receive it it's gonna redirect the http request to https for better security purpose because http is always secure um, compared to http uh, the allowed HTTP method get head uh, option so it's according to your choice you can choose which option you want to go for um, for my simple website I'm just gonna go with the get and head option a uh, restrict uh, viewer access uh, no and the cache uh, here's a recommendation that is caching optimized is recommended for S3 we're gonna go with this and uh, we're gonna choose this on origin uh, request policy it's optional we're gonna choose the of course s3 origin one uh, that's good and additional settings so we are okay with uh, the, the current uh, default settings uh, these are all optional and uh, currently we're not planning to attach any WAF so if you are uh, curious about web application firewall uh, i have uh, uh, created a video related to this uh, where i have explained web application firewall how can we use it so in your case if you want to protect your web application using uh, web application firewall you can attach this uh, web application firewall with your cloud font but uh, it, this uh, wife is outside the scope of today's video so i'm not gonna create one so I'm gonna choose do not enable security protections in here uh, then the use all location so this is a good practice like uh, whenever you're creating a cloud phone the main purpose is uh, to have the your static content cached in multiple parts of the world in different edge locations so for that reason uh, um, always go for use all edge location but but if your application is a very uh, region centric then you can go for this one like use only for north virginia and europe or something like that or you can use use north virginia europe asia so it depends on your requirement but the best practice is to go with this one the first one and then the ssl certificate so if you want to attach this with your subdomain uh, and you want to have a https uh, feature then you need to upload your ssl certificate the good part is that you can upload your ssl certificate uh, uh, in two places from aws iam and also from aws certificate manager so for the sake of this video i'm not gonna do that because uh, for that i need to have a domain uh, currently i don't have any uh, domain under my registry so that's why i'm not gonna go for the certificate option and then everything else looks fine to me and uh, uh, if you also want to have uh, ipv6 then you can uh, I turn it on for our case we're gonna test it just like we before so that's why I'm just gonna turn it off for now all right so this is the current setup the current configuration once we hit create distribution so uh, and uh, now if we go to the distribution setting in here page here you can see that the status is deploying so it takes at least uh, five to seven minutes to deploy the cloud front distribution because of the back end it a lot of stuff is happening so i'm gonna pause this video for now and when the application the distribution status is uh, in uh, okay state then uh, then we will look into it all right friends i'm back so uh, if i go to the distribution once again here i can see it's an enabled state that's good 
I'm gonna click the hyperlink and here I'm gonna click this specific uh, domain name actually I'm gonna copy it so this is uh, the endpoint of the CloudFront distribution now let's see whether it works or not so I'm gonna paste it in here this is uh, a CloudFront uh, distribution endpoint a sub uh, a subdomain we can say and hit it and here we go now our website is being uh, served by the cloud font here we can see our content the index file in here so that's pretty great congratulations guys for reaching this far of this video well today we covered a lot today we created s3 bucket we enabled a static website we hosted a simple static website inside the s3 bucket then we created a cloud font distribution and integrated the cloud font distribution with the s3 bucket and finally we saw uh, our uh, static website was uh, uh, delivered by the cloud font distribution so if you guys have any questions or any concerns related to this whole process let me know under this comment section and uh, i'm gonna reply back in a very short period of time if you found this video helpful please uh, like and subscribe to my channel because i'm planning to upload more and more videos related to aws related to azure google cloud or anything related to cybersecurity. Uh, if you want me to cover any specific topic please let me know under this comment section too uh, that's all for today thank you so much